Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the session will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. Before the event starts, I would like to remind all the attendees to mute your microphone. Your cooperation is very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, before we proceed with our event, please make yourself comfortable and most importantly, please mute your microphone. So now, Honorable Dr. Iskandar Bihaya, Chancellor of IEEE, UKM EDS Student Branch Chapter and Associate Professor, IR Dr. Norhana Binti Arsad, Chancellor of IEEE, UKM Student Branch, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wan Muhammad Nohaikal bin Wan Muhammad, and I am the moderator for today's webinar. First of all, I would like to welcome you all to this EDS Distinguished Lecture Program, Impact, History, and Future of Nanoelectronics. So before we start, there is a good news for all the participants. IEEE is now offering a reduced dues option for all renewing and first-time student members. Students wishing to take advantage 
of the 50% discount can do so by using the promotion code FUTURE50 during the checkout process. If you have any inquiries, please do not hesitate to contact the official email of the I I E UKM student branch at ieesb.ukm20 eliasagmail.com. Okay, before the presentation begin, let me explain on how you can talk to us during this session. If you have any question during the presentation, you can just write them in the meeting chat. We will have a Q&A session to answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Alternatively, you are also allowed to unmute your microphone to ask the question during the Q&A session. So now I would like to introduce our distinguished lecturer. He is Professor Hiroshi Iwai. Professor, Professor Hiroshi Iwai was born in Tokyo, Japan and received bench engineer and PhD degrees from the University of Tokyo. He worked at Toshiba Corporation from 1973 and to, to 1999, developing NMOS, CMOS, BiteMOS, and mixed signal LS, LSI technologies and products. In 1999, he moved to Tokyo Institute of Technology and conduct nano S CMOS research, research until 2020. In 2020, he received the Yushan Scholar title from the Taiwan government and work at IS, ICSD NCTUS of Vice Dean, Distinguished Chair Professor. He is currently a Vice Dean and Distinguished Chair Professor, ICSD NYCU Taiwan, and Professor Emeritus, Tokyo Institute of Technology Japan. His award institute include IEEE JJ Ebert Award, Yamazaki Teach Teach Award, IEE Paul Rappaport Award, IEEE Credo Brunetti Award, ICS Thomas Clinton Award, and ECS Gordon E. Moore Medal. He's, he's a life fellow of IEEE and life member of fellow of ICS and fellow of IEEJ, IEICE, and JASP. He was the president of IEEE EDS and the director of IEEE Division 1. Now, we know that he is not an ordinary, ordinary man. So please, lend your ears and give your full commitment to hear what will be given by Prof. Hiroshi Iwai in this webinar. All right, without any further ado, I would like to welcome the presenter, Professor Hiroshi Iwai. The floor is yours now. Welcome, Prof. Okay, uh, thank you very much for a kind introduction and uh, uh, good evening, everybody. So let me share my slide, okay. Can you see uh, yes, Bob. my slide? Yes, exactly. clear. Okay. Um, okay. Can I start? Yes. Hello. Can that okay. Okay. Can you hear? Okay. Yes, Bob. So, good evening. So, today I'll talk about the impact, history, and the future of nanoelectronics. And there are many new technologies invented in the 18th and 19th centuries. They are steam engine, electric generator, motor, electro, electric valves. But those are the converter between the different energy, thermal to mechanical or electrical to optical. Electronics started in the early 20th century, and it is a quite a new concept of technology. And this is a not only a energy to energy converter, but it's a converter between energy and information and information and the communication revolution, okay? So 
micro nanoelectronics is another new concept. There are tremendous performance increase by the downsizing. Okay. At the uh, beginning of the uh, 20th century, vacuum tube uh, started. Okay. And the transistor started and nano simo started. So it took it from electronics, microelectronics, and nanoelectronics. So in the past 115 years, device size decreased 10 to the minus fifth times. And performance, such as operational speed, energy consumption, volume, weight, cost, increased billions to uh, trillion times. So it's a huge uh, uh, improvement. And today, one terabit or uh, 128 gigabyte SD card is available for everyone with reasonable price, that, like uh, 20 to uh, 40 US dollars. And what would happen if we make, if you make one terabit memory with all type of trillion vacuum tubes, okay? Assuming that those are price or size or weight or power consumption. Okay, so what's the price is? One trillion vacuum to cost 100 trillion Japanese yen. That uh, correspond to Japanese national budget. But what's the weight? Weight is 100 megaton. That is about uh, 20 million uh, weight of the elephant. What is the volume? Volume 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times one uh, cubic kilometer. And that is uh, larger than the world's tallest building. And what is the power consumption? And that's the 50 terawatt. And how big 50 terawatt is? One uh, nuclear reactor only generate 1 billion watt. So we need a uh, 50,000 uh, nuclear generator uh, re reactors, okay? What is the air energy consumption? It is four times 10 to the 20 calorie. And what is that? It is a 2,000 times of the yearly global human consumption. So Sorry, without, prof. hello? Sorry, Prof. Hello? Hello, hello, Prof. Did you hear me? Yes, hello? Uh, did, you say, did you share another screen right now? Or just uh, screen number one? Pardon? Slide one. Can you did go you back say... to screen number one? No, no. Because uh, sorry, Prof. Uh, because we are still seeing the uh slide shared by you is the slide number one. So just wondering, have you already changed shared the slide? Oh, I, I don't know. Still, uh, still? I think there's some technical issues. Oh, uh, yeah. Now oh, we can I see. see. Okay, we can see the Google, uh, the memory cut, SD cut. We can see. Okay, already can. Because I. Oh, let me do the full screen. Can you can you see? Yes, Hello. Bro. Yes, bro. What, what it is on? Can you see the change? Yes, already can. So can you start from the first? You want? Ah, uh, yes, bro. You may yes. uh, proceed with. From the first? No, no, uh, no. Yes. Uh. Uh, Prof, are you at slide eight now? Pardon? Uh, are you at slide eight now? We can see slide eight. Slide number eight. eight. So do you want to start from number eight? Uh, now we are seeing uh, Prof sharing the slide from number eight. Are you moving the slide now? Yes. Because we cannot see the changes. You cannot see the change. Maybe I'll quit a full screen. How about this one? Ah, uh, yeah, we can see now. Okay, you can see the change. Yes, we can see now very clearly. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, probably full screen. Maybe a uh, reaction is uh, something slow. So uh, probably no, maybe it's slow for internet connection. Okay. So wh where do you want to start? Uh, Prof. Uh, do you mind if like uh briefly uh start again from the slide number one? Number one, okay, okay. Is I that okay? Prof. Yeah, okay. we can see the changes now very clearly. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll, I'll do from this one, okay. So, sorry, uh, so today I'll talk about the impact history and the future of non electronics. I'll go through quickly. 
And there are uh, many new technologies invented in the 18th and 19th century. There are steam engine, electric generator, motor, electric valves. And those are converted between a different energy, between thermal to mechanical or electrical to optical. Oh, by the way, uh, if you, you cannot see the change, please let me know, okay, immediately, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, sure, Prof. Okay, okay. Electronics started in the early 20th century, and it's a quite a new concept of technology. And uh, it is not only the converter between the energy to energy, but it's a converter between the energy to information. So it gives us uh, uh, information and the com communication revolution. And micro nano electronics is another new concept. There are tremendous performance increase. Uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, vacuum tube started. And uh, uh, at the uh, middle of the century, transistor started. And uh, at the end of the century, nano -simo started. And in 115 years, device size decreased one to the minus fifth times. And the performance, such operational speed or energy consumption or volume or weight or cost increases billions to a trillion times. Okay. So now one terabit or 128 gigabyte SD card is available for everyone with reasonable price and price about 20 to 40 US dollars. And what would happen if we make one terabit memory with all type of one trillion vacuum tubes? Assuming that those uh, uh, parameters, uh, price, uh, volume, uh, weight, and uh, power consumption. And what is the uh, one trillion vacuum tube price? It is one trillion uh, Japanese yen that corresponds to Japanese national budget. And what is the weight? Weight is 100 megaton, and that corresponds to a trillion million elephant weight. And what is the volume? That is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 of uh, one uh, cubic uh, kilometer, that is larger than the world's tallest building. And what is the power, uh, power consumption? That is 50 terawatt, and that is about, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, one nuclear reactor uh, generate only one billion watt. So we need uh, 50,000 uh, nuclear uh, reactor for the 50 terawatt, okay? What is the one trillion uh, vacuum to uh, energy consumption, yearly energy consumption? It is four times 10 to, 10 to the 20th calorie. So it is about 2,000 2, times or yearly global human consumption. So without the micro nano electronics, today's smart society does not exist. Even internet or IoT do not exist. So micro nano electronics, was the biggest technological revolution after the electron news. Okay. So uh, at the beginning of the 20th century, electronics started, and which gave us an electron society with a vacuum tube. And in 1960s, microelectronics started, and which gave us a computer society. And in the year 2000, nanoelectronics started, which gave us a smart society with nano CMOS. Hey, I'll talk about the history of electronics. And electrical engineering started much before in the middle of the 19th century or beginning of the 1800s. So energy and information can be transferred for long distance simultaneously with the electric wire. That is a very great leap of the technology. So energy is electric power transferred for motor drive or incandescent lamp or et cetera. Information is electric signal transferred for electric telegraph, okay? By electric telegraph, we can communicate for long distance in real time. So 1837, Samuel Morse invented a Morse code. That's a combination of short and uh, long, uh, uh, electric uh, pulse. And like alphabet A, it's defined by short pulse plus long pulse. And uh, alphabet B is uh, with a long pulse plus three uh, short pulses, and so on. Okay. And this is the electric wire. 
and we can input by on, on, on and off switch by human hand. And the pulse signal propagate, but with some decay, and up is uh, like an earphone, and we can hear the pulse sound. So we can have a, a real-time long-distance communication with the sentences, okay? That's a very, very uh, great uh, technological invention. However, because it decayed, so th they cannot uh, propagate like a, a kilometer or something. So we need an amplifier. And amplifier or the relay, relay is a, a consists of an electromagnet. And in the input of the uh, coil of the electromagnet, there's a, a pulse, on and off pulse. And when a, a pulse is on, because the magnet force, the, this uh, switch become on. So the pulse is sent to the another line amp with amplified. So this is a mechanism of the uh, amplifier. And uh, this amplifier is a fast amplifier and fast electric de devices. But this is only a digital signal amplification and very low uh, frequency operation because of the mechanical switch. And uh, at the end of the 90, uh, 1890s, almost beginning of the 20th century, wireless uh, communication started with electromagnetic wave. So we need a high frequency analog and digital amplifier. Okay. And this was realized by the invention of triode vacuum tube in 1906. Okay. This is uh, a uh, vacuum tube. So there is a, a three uh, electro terminal, okay? The cathode terminal is heated. And from heated cathode terminal, some, some electron is emitted. And anode bias is positive, so there is electron current flow. And electron current flow is controlled by the grid potentials, okay? When the potential is negative, there is no uh, uh, signal flow, no electron flow. When there is a, a positive potential, this electron flow is enhanced. And also we can modulate uh, in analog by applying like a sine wave to the grid so that the output, uh, output of the uh, signal is uh, amplified, okay? So this is a, a beginning of electronics. We can manipulate the electron movement for the uh, device applications. So this is the beginning of the electronics. Vacuum okay. tube is so nice and very widely used, but because the uh, vacuum tube site is uh, too large and there is large capacitance and uh, also the transit of uh, distance of the electron is very large. So it is not good, very high uh, frequency. And the cathode should be heated about uh, 12, uh, uh, 100 degrees centigrade. And also, the uh, voltage is very diff uh, difficult to reduce. So vacuum to uh, consume the very uh, large uh, power consumption. So there's the idea to use solid state device instead of the vacuum tube, to, because for, for the uh, very high frequency operation and low uh, power consumption. Okay. But solid state device very difficult because there are so many charges in the materials. So it is impossible to control the electron flow by grid. So idea is to use ultra thin semiconductor films and also the uh, electric field is applied through the capacitive coupling. Okay. So this is the idea of uh, uh, today's MOSFET. And uh, in 1928, uh, Lienfeld proposed uh, some patent of a MOSFET, okay? And this is uh, his uh, uh, patent, okay? So uh, this is a very thin uh, semiconductor film. And there is uh, some uh, uh, groove here so that the electric field is strong only here, okay? And from the... Uh, 
grid uh, potential change, we can control and amplify the signal. And this is upside down, okay? I put the gate electrode uh, upside here, okay? So this is a Lilienfeld uh, MOSFET structure. At the time, uh, he uh, thought of uh, uh, copper sulfide and aluminum oxide I use as a gate insulator and aluminum is a gate uh, electrode, okay? And, uh, okay, when a negative bias applied, Electrically located uh, at the bottom, so there's no current flow. And when the uh, positive bias applied, electron is uh, attached at the surface, and there is current flow. So this is the idea. But at the time, the material property is very, very bad. And the copper sulfide is not a sem good semiconductor. So there is no good operation MOSFET in 1928. And a very famous uh, physicist, uh, William Shockley, also tried to make a MOSFET in 1948. However, uh, at the time, the interface property between a semiconductor and gate insulator is very bad. There are so many fixed charge. And this fixed charge shield, the electric field. And also this fixed charge scatter the uh, uh, carrier or electron in the channel. So the conduction is very, very small. And there are very few, uh, very little magnification. So this cannot be used as a device. But very fortunately, when they uh, try to uh, investigate the germanium surface, they find the small signal amplification effect. This is a different kind of a transistor. This is not a MOSFET. This is a, a bipolar transistor. Basically, it's a junction transistor. And that was uh, 1947. And this is, yeah, is a 25th anniversary of the invention of a bipolar transistor. Bipolar transistor is not, not popular today, but it is used somewhere. Today's mainstream is a MOSFET. Okay. And in 1958, uh, first monolithic integrated circuit was invented by Jack Kirby of Texas Instrument. And 1953, first practical monolithic integrated circuit was invented by Robert no Noise over Fairchild. They integrated the bipolar transistor at that time. Okay. This is the first monolithic integrated circuit by Jack Kirby, 1958. So this is a, a monolithic integration of two bipolar transistors for multi vibrator uh, circuit. But uh, they uh, use uh, interconnect only, uh, on, only using a burning part on the air. In 1959, uh, Robert Noyce invented a mon uh, realistic uh, integrated circuit. Here, the interconnect is uh, printed so this is a really a today's uh, integrated circuit. In 1960, first MOSFET well, successful operation was uh, uh, shown by Dr. Khan and uh, M. Atra of uh, Bell, Tele Bell Telephone Laboratories. And the reason for the success is that they choose the silicon as a semiconductor and the summary grown silicon dioxide as a gate insulator. So interface between the silicon and the summary grown silicon dioxide is extremely good. So there is no other choice. So that was the 1960. Okay, this is a, a, his first a, a result of the electric characteristics. Okay. And this is a, a structure of the MOSFET. This is a plain view. From 1960 to uh, 71, so large scale integrated MOS circuit production was started. So Intel uh, produced 256-bit uh, SRAM. One SRAM cell uh, contained six transistors, so number of the transistors exceeds 1,000. Okay, and also intro 
Intel produced one kilobit. I'm sorry, this is a DRAM. DRAM. And also a four kilobit microprocessors. And number of the MOSFET in a chip exceed 1000, so we called it large scale integral circuit. So single MOSFET evolved to LSI with more than 1,000 MOSFET on a chip. And Intel produced a world fast microprocessors with 10 micrometer PMOS error technology. Okay. So micro started with IC and LSI. This is a, a Toshiba's DRAM chip trend, which I participated. And we started the one kilobit DRAM 1973. And we, uh, I developed a 64 kilobit DRAM, 1979. And this is a, a picture of the 64, 64 kilobit DRAM, which I developed. And the number of the transistors in the integrated circuit was only 10 in 1960s. And it, it became a 1970s, so we called LSI. And 1980s, it exceeds 10,000. So we call very large scale integrated circuit, VLSI. In 1990s, it exceeds 1 million. So we call ultra large scale integrated circuit. I'm sorry. In 2000, it exceeds 1 uh, billion. So someone tried to use a giant scale, but it be, be, uh, named did not become popular. So we cannot find a new uh, fancy names every 10 years. So name returned to VLSI, okay? So even now today we, we call it VLSI for very huge integration, okay? So six, since 1970s, LSI downscaling continued 50 years. So we experienced uh, 22 generations in 50 years. So one generation, uh, uh, is about 2.3 year, okay? So we started a uh, uh, 10 micron technology, 1970s. And uh, uh, 2020, five nanotechnology is uh, released. And this year, very soon, three nanometer technology will be released by, from TSMC, okay? So what is the limit of the downsizing? That is a very great interest. Okay, so what is the limit of downsizing? There is ultra limit, I'm sorry, there is ultimate limit. So it is a distance between the atoms, and uh, between, distance between the atoms in silicon case is 0 0.3 nanometers, okay? So below the uh, 0 0.3 nanometer, there is no physical structure. So please note, there is no picoelectronics anymore. We have a uh, microelectronics, nanoelectronics, but there is no picoelectronics. And uh, there is a fundamental limit above the ultimate limit. What is that? That uh, direct tunneling distance. That is about three nanometer. So below the uh, direct tunneling distance, three nanometer, there is no insulation or no switching off because of quantum mechanical effect there is no insulation because the direct tunneling current flows in the insulator, okay? But above that, there is a practical limit. That is a demerit by downsizing. If the demerit of the downsizing become a, a merit, become larger than the merit of the downsizing, then there is no downsizing, okay? And there is no commercial device. So it is expected that plateau limit is about 10 nanometer, okay? Please be careful about the technology node or commercial name of the logic nano CMOS, such as seven nanometer, five nanometer, or three nanometer technology node. They are just infinite names. And recent 10 years, CMOS technology node name have nothing to do with the real physical sizes. It is a very bad custom of the logic uh, CMOS industry. Let us see the IRDS 10, 2020 International Roadmap for Device and Systems. Okay. So commercial name, 
continue to decrease by 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 times every two years. So 5 nanometer, 3, 2.1, 1.5, 1.0, 0 0.7. However, real gate lengths and metal wire pitch decrease only at 0 0.9 times or 0 0.8 times, and there is no change at all. So you can see the commercial name and real uh, physical size is quite different. So that's the reason why the uh, practical limit is about 10 nanometer. Even the commercial name will become 0 0.7 nanometer in the future. Please be careful. Okay. So what are the causes of the practical limit? There are several causes. Maybe lithography cannot realize such a small uh, pattern, but cost become very, very uh, 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 large so that the uh, uh, product cannot be sold. Or heat generation, okay, by the huge power consumption. Or transistor leakage current when the gate lengths become very small. Or metal line resistance become very uh, high and reliability become very bad. Or production yield and gate oxide reliability degradation. So those are possible causes of the practical limit. Let us see. Okay. And the conclusion is, is uh, lithography and cost will not limit the heat generation and also trans leakage and the metal line resistance and the reliability degradation will limit the downsizing. Okay. Let's see each by each. So lithography resolution. One tenth of the wavelengths of the uh, uh, the optical uh, wavelengths used for lithography can be resolved by resolution enhancement technique. Okay, in the argon fluoride uh, lithography case, which is uh, used, the wavelength is 193 nanometer. So today already 20 nanometer is resolved, about one tenth of the wavelengths. Okay, so today now. Extremely ultraviolet lithography, EUV, is introduced. In that case, the wavelength is 13.8 nanometer. So theoretically, 1.3 nanometer can be uh, uh, resolved. So lithography resolution will not limit the downsizing. Okay. What is the cost? So there are very huge demand for high performance large scale integral circuit. Okay, it's a very strong in the smart society. So number of the high performance railway product will keep strongly increase. Thus the cost per price per device will not become a big uh, problem, okay? So there is so huge demand and so huge volume of production, the cost will not limit the downsizing. How about the heat generation, okay? So, under the ideal scaling scheme, heat generation density does not increase. Okay, this is a, a scaling scheme proposed by uh, Bog Denard, 1974. Okay, for the downsizing, all the uh, parameters, horizontal and also vertical parameter X, Y, Z, and in ad and also the supply voltage is uh, reduced. Okay. And by doing that, we can have a very uh, uh, good proportion of scaling of the IDVD uh, current as shown here. Okay. And by uh, one generation scaling is about K is 0 0.7. And uh, by scaling, the clock frequency it's increased by one over k. And if we can keep the chip size alpha same one, the number of the integration n increase one over square k. And very nice thing is the power consumption per chip. That is the number of the uh, frequency and number of the uh, transistors and capacitance per transistors times 
uh, separable to square finally become one. So there is no increase if uh, we can keep ideal scaling, okay? In that case, k equals 0 0.7, and x, y, z is 0 0.7, and separable to 0 0.7, and chip size is one. Okay, click frequency increase one point times, 1.4 times, number of turns increase twice, and the power consumption stays low. However, in reality, supply voltage stays almost constant, does not scale, okay? And chip size keep increase. So, the result is a power consumption keep increase, okay? Not stay low. So, this is a problem. So huge heat generation is a very big problem. So there is a presentation in 2001, uh, 2001 at the ISSC by Intel guy, P. Gelsinger. He predicted the future, 2000, in, in the 2002, the uh, chip size surface become like a hot plate surface. And 2006, the chip size uh, surface become like a nuclear reactor. And 2010, the surface become like a rocket noise surface. And 2016, it become a sun surface, okay? So power consumption limit the path scaling trend already, okay? What is a, a solution for that? That is a decrease the supply voltage and does not increase the clock frequency, okay? So this is a trend of a microprocessor, okay? Number of the transistor keep increase. This is a Moore's law, okay? And clock frequency stop increase at year, around two, year 2000 because we cannot increase the power consumption anymore, okay? So by uh, stopping the increase of uh, clock frequency, okay, typical uh, power consumptions stop to increase, okay? What is the performance, okay? Single thread performance keep saturate from uh, year 2000. However, we have a increase of the number of the cores of the microprocessor. So total performance of the microprocessor still keep increase. So the conclusion is uh, we need to stop increase of the uh, clock frequencies and uh, that saves the power consumption. So how about the transistor leakage current at off stage? So transistor leakage current is very, very complicated. There is a four component, punch through, direct tunneling, sub-threshold, and gate insulator leakage. Okay. So what is a, a punch through current? This is a punch through current, okay? This is a cross section. And this is a MOSFET. And, uh, this is a case when drain is drain voltage is one volt. Because this is a semiconductor, there's a positive potential region in the substrate. When I decrease the gate length, then the positive potential region touches the source, and then electrons flow into the, this region and finally reach the drain. So this is a, a punch through current. Okay. And how to uh, solve this one? by ideal scaling, okay? By decreasing the uh, gate length and oxide thickness, and also we decrease the uh, supply voltage, then uh, this positive region becomes small. Okay, however, recently it is very difficult to decrease the uh, supply voltage and gate oxide. Then we can suppress the uh, Particle current by multiple gate structure, okay, like that. So we we can make 
the channel area very thin, and we can provide the two uh, uh, gate electrode at the top and bottom. By doing that, we can control the channel potential to zero volt. Okay, and we can suppress the positive potential region here, like very very small. Okay. So this is the idea of a fin fit. We can have a very thin silicon area, okay, and two gate electrode surrounding. And there are many different kind of the this kind of uh, uh, multiple gate, dry gate, or omega gate, or all surrounded gate. And recently, this this kind of uh, nano sheet structure become a very very important because this provides a very large area of the um, stack channel. So this is a, a trend okay, of the uh, MOSFET structure from planar fin, gate around, and nano sheet, okay, like, like here. So second component of the leakage is a direct tunneling current, okay, between the source and drain. There's a potential barrier between the source and the channel, okay, that is a PN junction uh, potential barrier that is about 0 0.7 electron volt and when uh, uh, this potential barrier distance is less than three nanometer okay because of the quantum mechanical effect the wave function of the electron penetrate this potential barrier so there is no direct tunneling current uh, i'm sorry there is no insulation of the, this potential barrier, okay? So we cannot suppress the uh, leakage current when a gate length become less than three nanometer. This is a fundamental limit. But above the three nanometer, this uh, leakage current is very, very small. So until the three nanometer, the uh, direct turning current will not become a problem, okay? And uh, another, uh, Third component is a substantial leakage current. Okay. So ideal MOSFET characteristics is like that. When a uh, gate voltage below threshold voltage, there is no current. And above threshold voltage, there is current. But in reality, there's a off leakage current that is a exponential function of the gate voltage. Okay. Why exponential? Because the uh, uh, electrons in the source, energy distribution is a Boltzmann statics. Okay. And uh, electron which has a higher than this surface potential diffuse into the channel and drift into the uh, drain. So this is a substantial leakage current. And uh, there's a relation between uh, this surface potential and gate voltage, like that. And finally, the substantial leakage current is exp expressed by the exponential function of the uh, gate voltage. So like here, okay. So this is the uh, plot in which the uh, y-axis is a log scale. So the subset leakage current is a log linear. And what will happen if uh, we can uh, uh, scale the device by a half, okay? Gate length become 100 nanometer, 50 nanometer. And in that case, separate voltage become a half and threshold voltage threshold voltage also should become 0 0.3 to 1, 0 0.15 voltage. And that means this curve will move or shift by 0 0.15 volt to the left direction. And what happened, okay? What happened for the leakage? The leakage when a VG is zero volt, 
increased 1,000 times, okay? Because this is a, a log scale. Okay. So, substantial leakage current is a very big problem. And uh, th this will limit the downsizing, okay? And also, the supply voltage is very difficult to reduce because we cannot decrease the threshold voltage anymore. How about the gate insulator leakage? And historically, it has been believed that the gate insulator leakage limits the downsizing. And uh, there is a very famous technology, a book written by Kabamid and Lin Conway. And uh, it is written that Finally, there appears to be a fundamental limit of approximately quarter micron channel length where certain physical effects such as the tunneling through the gate oxide begin to make the devices of a small dimension unworkable. Okay. So this is a, a band diagram, okay. When the gate length is about three nanometer, the I'm sorry, when the gate length is about a quarter micron, 0 0.25 nanometer, the gate oxide should be about three nanometer. And this is a potential uh, diagram. So the wave function of the gate electrode uh, electron will penetrate the potential barrier of the gate oxide when the gate oxide thickness is about three nanometer. So there is no insulation of the and gate insulators. So it was believed that three nanometer would be the limit. However, okay. So international technology roadmap predicts three nanometer would be the limit. However, it is not really. We try to make a 1.5 nanometer uh, SiO2 gate MOSFET. Okay. And the results show when the gate length is about 10 nanometer. 10 micrometer, there's a significant leakage current. But when the gate lengths become smaller and smaller, this leakage disappear. The reason is very simple, okay? Because gate leakage is in proportional to the gate area, and this is, is in proportion to the gate length. And drain current is in inversely proportional to the gate length. So the ratio to the gate leakage current to the drain current is proportional to the uh, gate length square. So when the uh, uh, gate length becomes small, the ratio becomes very, very extremely small and become a negligible. So after that, people try to make the uh, very thin gate oxide MOSFET below uh, uh, about to the one nanometer, and it really works very well. So three nanometer was not a, a limit of the downsizing, and uh, one nanometer became the limit. Below the one nanometer for the SiO2 gate insulator, the leakage is too large. However, there is another solution. The direct constant of the uh, SIOT is only four. And if we can change the so-called high K material, then the direct constant might be uh, like uh, 20. And in that case, we can increase the physical thickness about uh, five times and we could obtain the very similar result to the MOSFET. And Intel introduced half -nim, uh, oxide based gate insulator 2007. So this is a so-called high K direct uh, gate insulators. And equivalent oxide thickness is about one nanometer. Okay. And I myself made a MOSFET with EOT is equivalent oxide thickness of about 0.5 nanometer. 
on the leakage current. Okay. Uh, this, this slide shows the EOT dependence of the leakage current. And when the decreasing the EOT value 0 0.7 to 0 0.4, even the leakage current is 10 times smaller than the value specified by the international technology roadmap. So gate insulator leakage current will not limit the downsizing. So conclusion is that the direct tunneling, sub, uh, punch through direct tunneling and gate insulator leakage will not limit, but substantial leakage current limit the gate length downsizing because it's an exponential component. Okay. So I'll change the topics. How about the metal line resistance increase and reliability degradation? Resistance increase and reliability degradation at the very narrow metal lines could be improved by the introduction of a new material such as cobalt. Okay. However, we'll not find any solution for the downsizing of line with us into the deep sub 10 nanometer. So below 10 nanometer, it is very difficult to have a very low uh, resistance increase and very high reliability uh interconnect so interconnect is limited about a uh, 10 nanometer how about the uh, uh, production yield and gate oxide reliability degradation it does not seem that sub 10 nanometer design rule degrades the yield significantly the limit of the gate oxide eot shining due to the level seems to be about 0 0.8 to 7 nanometer, and it will not be necessary to decrease the EOT less than 0 0.7 nanometer because the gate length will not become less than 10 nanometer. So gate oxide thickness will not limit because uh, we do not need to decrease the gate oxide thickness less than 10 nanometer because the uh, substantial leakage current become too much. So I'll talk about the uh, near future in 15 years. Near future, we'll still continue the effort for the downsizing about 10 years. Let us take a look at the I IRDS 2020. Okay. And uh, eight years from 2020 to 2028, the downsizing keep con con uh, continue. Okay. And the commercial name become 5 to 1.5 nanometer. But supply voltage will not decrease too much. And the gate length will become 18 nanometer to 12 nanometer. And after that, for six years, there is no change of the gate length. And also, metal line pitch does not change at all. So we reach the limit of downsizing year 2028, that is about six years from now, at the gate length of 10 nanometer and metal line pitch of about uh, six, 16 nanometer. Okay. And because of the, there is no downsizing after year 2020, there is no improvement of the single transistor performance, okay, ion current, and effect mobility and CV over I, that is a switching time. There is no improvement. So we really reach the sum limit of the transistor uh, performance uh, progress. But, okay, we can by 3D integration. So from 2031, there is a stack channel layers to sheet. And 2034, there is a stack channel layer of the four sheet. And this increase the drain current of the MOSFET, okay? So by doing that, 
we can still keep the Moore's law, at least until year 2034. So SRM cell uh, density will keep increase even after the downsizing will stop year 2008 by 3D integration until year 2034, and it, it will be also continue after that. Okay, you can see SRM density increase from uh, 1737 to 142. And non uh, uh, logic gate uh, density also increased 4778 to 329. Of course, okay, the power density also increased, and also mass number of the mass which is used for uh, production also increases, the cost increase and the uh, power increases and the heat increases. So at certain time, 3D integration will be limited, but we do not know at this moment, okay? So this is the structure of the uh, so-called nanosheet, stack nanosheet MOSFET. And already uh, seven stack uh, channel layers of the MOSFET is published. So we can increase the number of the stack, okay? But uh, in a memory case, there are much more uh, number of the uh, uh, integrations, okay? This is a 3D non uh, uh, flash memory cells. Okay? We have already more than 100 uh, uh, sheet of the transistors and year 2020 it will be more than 200. So three integration really uh, uh, save the limit of the downsizing. Okay. And uh, this is a transistor level but also in the chip level there is another three uh, uh, the integrations. So this is a, a like a, a DRAM cells. There's the eight layer of the DRAM cells, okay? And that is also connected to the uh, microprocessors in, in uh, uh, silicon uh, interposers, okay? So this kind of the 3D integration will save the limit of the downsizing, okay? So I'll talk about the new future for 15 years. So there are still continuous effort for the downsizing. However, the downsizing will reach its limit in 10 years due to the off leakage of the MOSFET and the resistance increase and the reliability duration of the metal lines. By 3D in integration, we can increase the integration and keep more low. However, 3D integration will reach the limit in some future due to the cost and heat generation, which are created by huge number of the devices within small footprint, okay? So let us take a look of uh, our front-end R&D activities published at IDM 2021, just recently, okay, December last year. So progress of the 3D trend of MOSFET are more aggressive than the international uh, roadmap for device and systems. You will agree there are so many things to do for future. Okay, Samsung uh, uh, pred uh, presented that the cost per performance keep okay uh, decrease in a, in a several at least several years in the future, like like shown here. And the IMAX showed that the most fat structure become a, some st 3D stacked. And in future, we will make so-called C-FET in which n fat and p fat are stacked. Okay, this is some cross-section of the fork sheet MOSFET and uh, nano-sheet MOSFET. And also Intel uh, presented at the IDM 2020s so-called CFET device. They have a four stack layer of uh, NMOS and uh, four, another four stack layer of uh, PMOS. 
that consists of the CMOS. And this saves the footprint. And the uh, tail also shows in IDM 2020 so called the sheaf, uh, sheafed, which uh, PMOS and NMOS are stacked. And also, uh, they show the buried uh, power arrays. So, power line interconnect is taken from the backside. That increase the integration in, uh, in, uh, integration uh, integration okay and the uh, national Taiwan university all showed the eight stack layers of the p mosfet okay and there is also some cheap level uh, integrations and also some uh, university uh, Rensselaer uh, Polytechnic Institute in the United States showed the new new materials, which is very good for narrow uh, interconnect lines, okay, like uh, cobalt or iridium or RH. So there are many things to do in the uh, future. Okay. However, the three integration, 3D integration will reach limit in the long future because of the cost and the heat increase. So what will be after reaching the 3D integration? Okay. What will be after reaching the limit of 3D integrations? Don't worry. There is no problem at all. The demand for LSI and semiconductor devices will keep increase in the future intelligent smart society. So what kind of the demand? more supply uh, of uh, LSI and semiconductor devices, and more optimization for each application, and new functions, and also price decrease. And so we need to more engineers for the above uh, purpose. The situation is similar or even better than the automobile industry. Speed and size of the automobile saturated long time ago, However, number of the automobile in the world is close to the upper limit, but still there are many things to do for the development of the automobiles. So don't worry about the future of the semiconductor industry. So I'll talk about future uh, tw towards the uh, uh, 22nd century. So for far future, what do we have to think about the about. So we have to think about the introducing a bio system. Okay. So mosquito brain or a uh, dragon frame, dragonfly brain is much more efficient than today's uh, computer. Okay. So let us comp compare the AI machine produced by semiconductor devices and human brain, okay? So we compare the difference of the time and the evolution, difference of the voltage and frequency, difference of leakage current, difference of the wiring uh, freedom. The okay, biosystem has experienced the history of evolution for billions of years. Semiconductor has only tens of years. If the system with the semiconductor and metal interconnect were better than with a protein and nerve, then our brain would have consisted of semiconductor and metal. But we don't have semiconductor brain and metal nerve. So brain composed of brain, protein, and nerve should be more efficient than the semiconductor system. OK. So how about the uh, separable voltage and clock frequency? So MOSFET. Okay, in the transistor case, the supply voltage is about 0 0.7 to 0 0.56 volts. Very difficult to reduce below that because the substantial leakage. And the clock frequency is about 3 to 5.5 gigahertz. Okay. And the power consumption very huge, like uh, one kilowatt, just for example, for AI machine. Okay. So this is the AI machine chip. Okay. 
And uh, this is a very famous uh, tensor uh, uh, processor unit produced by Google. Uh, Google. Okay. And uh, in the neuron case, okay, synapse is activated. Okay, there is an electric pulse, and this is only a pulse. And the chemical is uh, emitted within a synapse when the electric pulse reaches to the end of the one synapse. And after receiving the chemicals, another pulse is uh, uh, generated, okay? And it is a very low power consumption because of electric pulse with its uh, pulse height is only 100 millivolts and the frequency is one kilohertz. So, in this case, we have a so huge number of the brains, neuron, but total uh, power consumption is only a several tens of watt. So, compared with the AI machine, power consumption is very, very small. And there is no off leakage current. Hello? Hello, someone? Is it okay? Okay. Okay, okay, bro. Maybe okay. some. Okay, okay. Sorry. So we have about uh, five minutes or so? Uh, maybe. Okay, okay, okay. I'll finish it. Okay. In the neuron case, in the off stage, there are no chemical emissions. So there is no leakage current. How about the uh, IO? Okay. The wiring freedom, the semiconductor device have only uh, stacked multi layers of the 2D wires. So the connection is very limited. Okay. And uh, power consumption of the such a multi uh, layer is uh, very huge. Okay, at very high frequency. But the neuron case is a real 3D wires. And this has a very large freedom of the connection on more than 1,000 IO per neurons and reconfigurable. And still are uh, uh, very low frequencies and very small power consumptions, okay. For the semiconductor case, we need a very high frequency and very high huge power consumed for our interconnect. But neuron case, the uh, energy consumption is very small, even the 1,000 connection per IO. Okay. So biosystem of brain is much more efficient than AI on the semiconductors. Why human brain can't win the AI in games? Because the human brain is not designed to keep concentration for only one thing for long hours, and brain lose interest to do the same thing for long hours, then get tired and sleepy. Human brain need to rest and sleep, and human brain sometimes forget what was around. It is very difficult to accurately remember the very huge volumes of data, and also it is very difficult to remind it accurately. So problem on AI is, is AI on semiconductor consumes huge energy only for one thing, and thus cannot treat many items, which human brain can do easily. The brain problem is a uh, brain cannot keep concentration for only one thing for long hours. So the best solution is to help each other or cooperation between the AI and brain. In order to make the biosystem more reliable, we need to develop direct communication between the semiconductor and the brain. And this means we'll be able to communicate directly with the brain of dogs and cats in the future. Okay, this is not the SF world. Already we can display the image which humans see in the brain using a sensor and AI techniques. Already we can do that. So please re uh, remind that the machine cannot complete, compete even with dog. 
like a dog sniffing, uh, hunting, threading, policing, rescuing, seeing eye, stock farming, and other pet. And AI machine cannot be. Okay. So we might use birds, insects, rats, fish for surveillance and maintenance of the tunneling, bridge, building, etc. from air, surface, earth, water, more efficiently and safely and for long hours than a drone or a robot. So we traditionally use animals for food, labor, and as friends, we need to human society consensus how to treat animals and insects considering the ethics in the future. At the same time, we also need to improve the semiconductor devices by learning from biosystems, such as implementing algorithm of bio and imitating the physical structure of the bio. Okay. So in conclusion, 18th to 19th centuries, mechanics control the society. 20th and 21st century, electronics and mechanics control the society. And from the 22nd century, bionics, electronics, and the mechanics to control the society. So we have experienced exciting period for the development of the electronics and micro electronics in the first in the past 115 years. Next few hundred years will be more exciting period with the cooperation of the bionic, electronic, and mechanic technologies. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Okay. Thank you so uh, much. And I, uh, uh, okay, I will uh, stop the sharing. Thank you so much, Professor. It's very interesting, interesting presentation and very amazing presentation from you. I see we have lots to study in the nano technology, nano electronics, lots of problem and solving from the engineers and scientists. So by uh, from bipolar, monotonic, morphets, trams. So it's very, for me, it's very difficult for students, but we need a lot of study to for doing this and a lot of work, I think. So, sorry, uh, sorry uh, because I consumed some time uh, at the first time because of trouble. So uh, I see. I had I to see. quick, quickly. So um, my it's pronunciation okay. may be a little bit, but I'm sorry. It's yeah. okay, bro. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But it's mm -hmm. very interesting mm -hmm. uh, presentation from you. Okay, so I think that's all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the Q&A session. You may write your question in the meeting chat or raise your hand. I think maybe there is one question in the meeting chat from the to Zuhil Mustafa. So I try to read it. Would there be further advancement of nanoelectronic to femtoelectronic technology, Prof? What is a femtoelectronic? I already told uh, that uh, there is no picoelectronics. That's, that's why I see. In, 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 in the, in the mm. special, in the timing scale, of course, there are picosecond or femtosecond. But uh, in 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 a size regarding the size, mm. the limit of the based on the at atom size. Okay, I see. So really, a downsizing is a limit. Mm. Okay, and uh, only a one atom we can we can uh, we cannot make a device. Okay, atom length we cannot we cannot make a device. And three nanometer is the limit of the insulations. So. We need at least uh, above three nanometer, mm -hmm. and as I also I explained, there is a practical limit because of so huge uh, leakage current. Leakage current. Yeah, we cannot make uh, smaller devices. It like a bio bio mm -hmm. bio system, it has a much uh, use a much uh, larger di dimension. Cell cell uh, human cell. Okay, size is much uh, bigger. Uh, yeah. That's why for me nano is very small enough mm -hmm. to to go to the pico one, and then for the next one, prof. But 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 I I, I still uh, keep uh, some uh, answer. Okay, I see. as 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 I told. Mm -hmm. So, 
the size, the downside reach a limit almost. And then we increase the performance by 3D integration. But 3D integration with the limit will reach the limit about uh, 10 years from now. And after that, as I told, we 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 think about the cooperation with the biosystem. Okay. In this sense, we have a cooperation of um, mechanics and electronics. Electronics are new new technology started 18th century. And then we we really we can use the biosystem from this century. So the combination of the bio and uh, electronics and mechanics and other technology, chemi chemi chemical, or other, those are very important. Okay. Okay. That's what yeah. I is very right because we cannot, we have to like make right each other, each other related, each other right technology and the brain, human brain. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, in, in a semiconductor, uh, industry very important and there are many so many demands so like a car industry automobile industry still will reach a limit we have uh, so many things to improve the semiconductor okay mm. even though we reach a limit there are so many things to do in the next uh, several tens of years so don't worry at all <laughs> that's why okay. hi okay doctor so for the next question from wong wei li how does nanoelectronic can provide a job sector in Malaysia, you think? <laughs> How, Brock? Ah, I think there are infinity, uh, I think, of possibilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, so uh, maybe in uh, some me medium term, I guess uh, maybe that there could be uh, some semiconductor, maybe a uh, manufacturing possibility because uh, it is very risky to only uh, manufacturing is located in uh, in uh, Taiwan, Korea, or, or China. If uh, there is some, uh, some, something happens between those countries and supply of, uh, of uh, man manufacturing is uh, very difficult, like, like, uh, like, uh, like a war between Russia and uh, Ukraine. Ukraine. So maybe uh, we need to distribute the manufacturing side. That's one thing. And also from the application side, there are infinity pro, uh, possibilities, okay? And there are many interests related to the applications from a, from a machine level and also some uh, software level, okay? So nano, nanotechnology provide the many uh, uh, capability of the of the uh, systems so you can work in the system side and also uh, some also some machine side yeah 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 exactly bro i think they need to have manufacture first for uh upgrading upgrade the nanotechnology so i think the last one maybe from Xiao Shen Li, what did you see Malaysia in 10 years with nano electronic? Oh, 10 years, uh, that's the past, past 10 years. I think what? maybe for the next future, for 10 years. Next, next, oh, next, um, next, okay, next, next, next 10 years. Yeah. I have not seen yet the uh, next 10 years, so, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 I see. I, I can imagine. Uh -uh. Yeah, I think uh, Malaysia will make a very big progress because uh, Malaysia uh, political situation is uh, uh, stable. Yeah, mm. compared with some compared with some East, South Asian countries, mm. there are some uh, some economic economical problem in some some South Asian countries and political problem South Asian countries Southeast Asian countries. But Malaysia is uh, stable now, and uh, in that case, there is a very big uh, possibility in the future. That's what I, I, I won't see. I see, bro. So great, I great, great feature for Malaysia. Great, yeah, maybe I, 
I also thought for Malaysia for the great future in nano electronics. Yeah. Okay, Prof. I think that's all. Maybe mm -hmm. for this because we run out of time. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, finally, uh, we come to the end of the presentation. Do you take a picture? You told. Ah yes, we have. Uh, we we want to take a picture after this. So we would like to thank the presenters presenter professor hiroshi iwai for very interesting presentation and to all the audience for your active participation hopefully the presentation will be very uh, beneficial for everyone before we end to this session uh, just uh, professor asked just now uh, for group photos so let us take a group photos so everyone uh, I think uh, uh, we need some minutes for all to prepare to open the camera. So please. Oh, by the way, Prof, sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, you. Prof, uh, there is one question in the uh, meeting chat. Uh, would you mind if I share your email so that you can answer his question? Oh, maybe I through through you. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> I'm okay. happy to reply, but uh, okay. maybe through you is uh, better. <laughs> okay, sure, no problem. Okay, thank you, Prof. <laughs> but uh, someone can f find my email easily, maybe. It's very easy, Prof. Yeah. Okay, all participants are kindly invited to open your cameras. Okay, we shall take the photos now. Smile, please. Three, two, one. Okay, one more. Three, two, one. Okay, freestyle. Three, two, one. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much, Prof. So, okay, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to scan the QR code on the screen after this or access the feedback form through the link posted in the meeting chat for the e-certificate. Thank you for your attention. We hope to see you again for our next event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. It's a very okay. pleasure to meet you in this mm -hmm. chat. Yeah, it's thank a very you. nice. Yeah, very thank nice you. to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Okay, thank you. So, bye bye, Thanks, everyone. Prof. Bye, Prof. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, Prof. Yeah. So, guys, don't forget to scan this QR code and don't forget to join our next event. It's on 13 April 2022 from 8 p.m. until 9.30. So please, scan the QR code. Uh
Okay? Our meeting will end at 9.40. So, please quickly scan the QR code that presented. And thank you very much for guys' cooperation for this webinar. Thank you.